Having a dedicated space in your home to watch and enjoy movies is an awesome luxury to have, and it's one that can quickly turn into an endless spiral of upgrades. The release of new processors, amplifiers, speakers, and screens are all pushing us towards constantly improving and doing the next best thing for our space, but do you really need to? My guess is probably not, and I'm going to give you some reasons as to why you really don't need that upgrade. Before the video real quick, I just wanted to stop in and say thank you so much. Um, I cannot believe I've already hit over 100 subscribers in like 30 days. Um, that was my goal by the end of the year because um, I was really just doing this for fun to share my love of movies and home audio and apparently a lot of people also really love that as well. Um, so thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. I hope I can continue to provide stuff that is interesting to you guys. Um, so. Yeah, really, I, I don't have, you know, anything super prepared because I wasn't expecting this for a long time, but uh, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy this video, and I will see you next time. Before running to purchase new equipment in hopes of improving your sound, make sure you're getting the most out of the system you have. Speaker angling and positioning are important in creating an accurate sound image, so make sure your speakers are at least a few feet away from the wall and angled or towed in towards your listening area. I'll be the first to admit that I cannot have my speakers in the proper position due to my space, and I know that many people must compromise for their area as well, but keep in mind that unless your speakers are in the proper position, you are sacrificing at least some level of sound quality. Even a few inches in one direction or another can make a huge difference. Along with the speaker's physical placement, make sure you fine-tune your crossover settings too. Your system may just need a simple adjustment to really dial in the right sound. THX recommends the standard at 80 Hz, which is often fine, but if you have larger tower speakers like the 620s that I have for example, they can extend down to 38 Hz and you may be missing out on some of the speaker's range and performance. I like to set mine at 70 or 60 Hz just to get a little bit more mid-bass. Just make sure you don't set your speaker's crossover closer than 10 Hz above the bottom range of response. So the R34 center I have, for example, goes down to 82 hertz, so setting it at 90 isn't really ideal, so I set it to at least at 100, for example. The next thing to check is your wiring. You really don't need to spend a lot of money on those high-end cables, as you'll just be wasting your money, but a high-quality 16 or 14 gauge wire from a reputable seller will really ensure you're, that you're getting solid connections. Make sure all your wires are connected the same way so you won't run into phase issues and that if you have a really, really long run for your rear surrounds or something, for example, consider even going to a 12 gauge wire. I also like to change out all of my wires maybe once or twice a year, and I know that that's not really necessary, but it's cheap, it doesn't take a lot of time, and it makes sure that my speakers are always getting fresh, solid connections. Another thing you can do is level match your speakers with an SPL meter. If you don't have one, you can just use your phone. The apps are definitely not the most accurate, but they are better than nothing and can at least get you kind of close. Play some pink noise through your speakers, which most receivers already have them installed on the receiver itself, and adjust the individual speaker decibels in the settings to hit 75 dB for all of them. Now you may want to bump up your subwoofer or center a few dB to get the best bass and vocals, but try to not go more than a few decibels above or below zero for your speakers. Lastly, try the subwoofer crawl. I have a small room which really limits my sub placement, and I know many of you may also be in that position, but if you're not as space limited, try placing your sub in your seat and move around the room while some low tones are playing. Where it sounds best to you is where your subwoofer should be, and hopefully it's just not like in the center of the room. I can't see. Now these tips will really help you to help dial in your system and your space. There is so much information out there online and on YouTube, but take all of it, including this video, with a grain of salt and know that maybe something that sounds really good to you but doesn't follow the accepted standard is fine. Just always make sure you're enjoying it, getting the most out of whatever you have before you jump up to something else. Thanks for stopping by. If you have any recommendations, please let me know, and I'll see you next time.